so hi everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Michał. I'm from uh, from Poland, and uh, I'm a senior software engineer working for Allegro. And uh, yeah, I want to I want to share some experiences on uh, how we built our own uh, API gateway. And um, yeah, so. Uh, a few words about us. Uh, Allegro is the biggest uh, retail marketplace in Poland. Uh, we've got more than 8 million users and uh, quite a few products sold daily. So uh, because we're a retail marketplace, we of course have, uh, have sellers who come and want to sell products on our, on our platform. And that's why we need the APIs just to uh, allow them to integrate with, uh, with our system. Uh, currently, we support two APIs. We have a legacy SOAP API, but we're continuously uh, exchanging it for, for REST API. So we built uh, all the new features in the REST API when exchanging the old ones. Uh, we've got around 15,000 unique clients, and these are the different integrations that, that integrate with our API. So this can be either like some private shops or some platforms for, for many users. Who, uh, uh, who use the platform then again to, um, to, to list products on, uh, on Allegro. Uh, so the legacy SOAP API was built mainly for, for the third-party integrators, but the REST API that we use currently is, um, is also used by our, mm, um, by our own, own teams, so by our mobile apps and our desktop apps, and of course, as well, the, uh, the, the third-party integrators. As well, so we have some separate endpoints, some for the public integrations and some for for our private needs. I'm um, I'm part of the API team, uh, so this is a team at, at Allegro which serves two main purposes. So uh, one is to maintain uh, the um, the API gateway itself, so uh, we make sure it works and we write new features. Add some features. We make sure that the old API works, the the uh, the SOAP API, and we also serve as a help for for different teams that want to expose new features on um, on our API, um, new uh, new resources, uh, especially those which are then made available to the third party integrators. So we make sure that they follow our guidelines and you know that everything with the uh, with the resources is okay. So we help, help the teams to, to design that. So um, how we started with it and where, where, where it all came from. Uh, so around six years ago, uh, there, was a ch uh, there was a decision made at Allegro to move from a PHP monolith, monolithic application to a service-oriented architecture. So we started to build a bunch of microservices in Java, Kotlin, and uh, Node.js, and different languages. And of course, when we started to use microservices, we also started to need an API gateway so we can expose some of the, some of the endpoints of these microservices to the outside world. So the team sat down and made a list of all the available, uh, all the available technologies and products which were available at that time. And um, so that was around 2014, so the list would probably look a bit different today, but uh, we created a list of everything that we could use, uh, and uh, we then put it put it into a matrix together with uh, our needs and the features that we knew we are going to need. So we knew that there's going to be something that we will need at the beginning, uh, so in, in the MVP, and we also knew that uh, in uh, in a relatively short time we'll need some more features to add. So we wanted to make sure that the technology that we choose or the product that we choose is going to be, uh, is going to be uh, one um, that will be satisfying for us. Um, oh, there was actually one uh, real showstopper uh, and was uh, discovery service support. So at that time, at Allegro, we used an inbuilt, house-built uh, discovery uh, service. And um, it, it wasn't a DNS-like service. It was using an HTTP, uh, HTTP API, but it wasn't a DNS-like. So we wanted to make sure that the, uh, the platform that we, ch that we choose uh, will be able to, to integrate with our discovery service. And interestingly enough, we couldn't find, find at that time anything that would uh, quite easily integrate with this uh, discovery service. So after analyzing all the, all the technologies and all the features that, that we had, we came to a conclusion that uh, actually all of these technologies and all those, uh, those products can be separated into two groups. 
So you, on one side, you would have APA managers, which are mm, something that helps you to, to publish your finished product and gives you some support for documentation, uh, client registration, it gives you some accountability of your clients. So well, more like business stuff, uh, yeah, something more like a business stuff. And on the other hand, you have API proxies, which are more technical, technical things that gives you the support for, um, for some rate limiting or payload modification, headers modification, uh, routing, and, and things like that. Uh, we knew that at first we needed an API proxy. Uh, so the, the basic features that we needed, that was, uh, that was supposed to be an API proxy, but we also knew that in a sh very short time we'll need the features of an API management. So we wanted to, to have something which would fall into those two categories. And at that time, uh, the only products that we, that we could find were, uh, were paid ones. And unfortunately, our business said that uh, we can't go with, uh, with a paid solution, so, so we decided to build one um, ourselves. So, uh, so the decision was to go with uh, Undertow Proxy. Uh, so it's a it's a service written in Java, and it uses uh, the um, it's of course the Undertow server and uses uh, Undertow Proxy proxy mechanism. Uh, we also use Zookeeper to keep the configuration there, and uh, we use Couchbase for rate limiting purposes. And as I said before, the, the Edge server is used uh, both by third-party integrators and our private, uh, private consumers, so the mobile apps and our desktop, desktop um, pages. So a bit more under the hood, uh, it uses, um, the uh, Edge service uses uh, something called um, uh, Undertow handlers. And uh, each handler is a separate class which is responsible for, for a different purpose. So uh, you have a handler which adds some metrics, and you can have a handler which uh, checks some security. Uh, you can have some a handler that uh, enables core support and, and stuff like that. And they are all uh, connected into a chain, and the request flows through all the handlers and then falls into a proxy handler and eventually is proxied to the underlying service. We also use uh, quite extensively response listeners. So uh, we add some response listeners, and when a response com comes back, uh, we can modify, for example, some headers or add some logging of, of the response code, um, stuff like that. So we managed to build um, um, a service which runs on virtual machines. These are machines with a uh, one and a half CPU uh, uh, cores and two gigabytes RAM, so it's, it's quite, uh, quite good for us, and um, we've got an average, uh, average overhead of 250 milliseconds on the edge service, and we're aware of that, that it's probably not the best that you can get from products available on the market, but as we are a marketplace, we actually it's not that important, the latency is not that important for us, so we're not doing anything that, that needs to be, you know, like a, um, needs to really those, those microseconds, so we're okay with this overhead, and um, it's, uh, it's just fine, fine for us. And as we uh, decided to do our own solution, uh, we of course had to make some design, um, design decisions on um, how to implement some of the um, common features that you would find in an API proxy on API management. So I would like to uh, talk about that for, uh, for a bit. So for routing, we decided to go with a separate repository where we keep a configuration in a JSON file. And uh, then the configuration is sent on demand to the Zookeeper, and we keep the then the configuration is kept in the Zookeeper. Uh, so we decided to have it in a uh, separate repository because it adds um, some nice uh, control over what the developers want to, um, want to expose on, the, on our API. So just um, make sure that um, the, the paths that they use or the um, accept or content type headers that they use uh, are, that we are okay with that so, so we can have um, some, um, a bit of a control here. And especially when, um, when someone wants to expose a, an endpoint that will be made available to the third party, third party integrators, so it will be uh, documented then we want to make sure they have to add this additional tag that it will be made public, and we, then we want to make sure that it follows our guidelines and uh, if everything is okay with the, with the endpoint. 
So we, have, we added also some security features. Um, uh, we check the validity of uh, all tokens on the edge service. So we don't want our developers to do it in their microservices. So whenever they get a, an all token uh, with a request to their microservice, microservice they're sure that uh, the token is, uh, is fine, that, the, um, that nobody tampered with the token, and it hasn't, um, um, it's, it's still valid, that it hasn't been revoked, for example, so, so they knew that they, they can work, work with the token. We also have session support for our desktop applications, that whenever we send a session cookie from the desktop application, we exchange the session for an OAuth token. So again, the, the microservices which are, uh, which are behind the proxy don't have to deal with that, and we do deal with it on, um, on the edge. We've, we've got some support for cores and uh, some basic CSRF protections. And uh, so we allow, uh, by default, we allow all, all course requests, but without any credentials sent. And uh, if our developers need, a, uh, need an endpoint that will be exposed uh, and they need uh, the, uh, the session information, so they, they need the credentials, they have to add some additional bits of configuration. They have to uh, explicitly say that, okay, this endpoint uh, can accept credentials and then we'll send the appropriate course headers. We can also expose some additional headers if, if that, is, that is needed. So for the documentation, we um, obviously use open, uh, open API specs. That's probably not very, very surprising. Uh, we currently use Redoc UI uh, to, um, for, the, uh, for the front. And uh, this is documentation that is used for our third-party integrators. So that's, that's something that, that people from outside the company use. Uh, we used to build it automatically. Uh, so every microservice that was exposed on the, on the edge was also exposing a part of the Swagger, the Swagger YAML file that was responsible for, for their endpoints. And then we had a service that would take all these files and put it together into big one Swagger YAML file and then expose it here on the documentation site. But we ran into a problem that, again, we were lacking some, some control over it. So people were using different types of language to, to describe the endpoints, and some of them added descriptions, some of them not. Some of, them, some of them added examples and some of, some of them not. So we decided to, to do it manually currently and uh, people just have to um, make pull requests to, to the documentation and we have a team that uh, is responsible for checking if the language is okay, if, if uh, all, the, uh, all the examples are there and, and stuff like that. So just want to make sure that, that this, is, this is okay. So we have a, we also have a rate limiting features, and these are uh, like business business like features. We use Couchbase for that, and we separate all the clients into different groups. So we can have like very verified, verified clients and verified clients, and uh, we give them uh, different limits of requests that they can do per day or per minute. Uh, we can also limit that per per uh, every re um, every resource, so we can. Um, we can set, for example, that some of those clients can have uh, more limits for, for different resources and, and uh, less limits for, for other resources. So that's m more of like uh, you know, business, uh, business features. And we also added some, some other um, minor, minor features that were requested by different teams, for example. We have, we have some ideas for that. So for example, we have a dashboard where, uh, where we show the percentage of errors uh, on the public endpoints. So these are the endpoints that are used by, by the third-party integrators. And we wanted to do that because when you have a microservice and, and it exposes a few endpoints and one of them is, is used by our third-party integrators and the others are, for example, used by, uh, by some internal other services, it sometimes you can, um, it sometimes you get errors on the public endpoints but you don't see them because and the whole, um, whole traffic that goes, comes into your microservice, it's just not enough uh, requests from the public endpoints to see that there's something going wrong. And we wanted to let our developers know that, okay, there are problems with the public endpoint uh, itself, because these are the problems that our, uh, our end users outside uh, see and, uh, and encounter. So we wanted to make sure that, that our developers are aware of, uh, of those problems. 
We also have support for uh, canary deployments in our company. So before we go to production, we can, we can deploy some services to, to canary. So we added some features to the edge server that uh, through sending some, uh, some headers, uh, we make sure that the request is then proxied to the canary instance and not to a production instance. So that makes, uh, makes for our teams to, uh, easier to test some of the features that are deployed to a canary, uh, canary deployment. And we, from time to time, we also have some features from, um, from other teams. Uh, for example, we, um, our mobile team um, had this need that uh, they were sending a, a header with, with some value. And some microservices needed part of this value from this header in another header. So we had to uh, write a feature that would take this, um, um, take this one header, extract the information that we needed, put it in an, uh, another header in the request, and send it to the, to the microservice. So uh, having, having our own solution allows us to, to quite easily add such feature, features that, that are needed by some, some very concrete, concrete needs or uh, concrete um, teams. So, um, was it worth it? We, of course, believe that, yeah, it was. We're, we're quite satisfied with it. We, it was built in a relatively short time. Uh, it took the, the team uh, less than a quarter to, to have it up and running. And it's been with us for, uh, for a few years now. And uh, it's, it's got all the features that we need. It blends uh, quite nicely into our infrastructure and uh, all the different tooling that we use at, uh, at Allegro. So uh, just... Uh, we really think it was it was worth it, and whenever we we miss any features, uh, it's very easy to to add them. And because it's uh, our own code base, we even sometimes have uh, different teams when they need some some new features, uh, they can just uh, open a pull request to to the code and add some features that um, that we think that we that we need. So the question of this presentation was: Should you build uh, your own solutions? Um, and the answer to, to such questions, as usual, is it depends. So um, I believe that if you don't have any sophisticated needs or any custom needs, and or you're a small company or you're at the start of, of a project and you th need something uh, quite fast to, to start with, uh, then go with something which is available on the market, especially that you know, we started uh, building our edge servers five years ago, and and from five years from 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 now, we're uh, in a really different different market, and there are so many good products out there. So uh, and with those products, it's usually easier to maintain them because you have usually some communities that uh, will give you some security patches, or if you bought something from a vendor, then you will get the security patches from the vendor, um, the support from the vendor, and so on and so forth, and you can find answers on Stack Overflow, of course, because we won't find anything for our service. Uh, but uh, if you feel that um, you have, for example, some, some weird setup of, of your infrastructure, or you have some really custom needs that you can't find in any of the products, and you have a team that, uh, that you can dedicate to, to, the, to this task, then don't be afraid to do it. It's not that um, it's not that complicated, and especially well, we use uh, undertow proxies, but there are also some new technologies like uh, Spring Cloud, uh, Spring Cloud Gateway. So uh, that 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 would probably uh, be even easier today to to do it with uh, with those new new technologies out there. So so don't be afraid of that. Just remember that you will need the time not only to build it but also to maintain it because you won't have the the support of the community or, or the vendors. So you would have to write any um, any fixes that that might that might appear. And that's everything from me. Um, here are, here have some links to um, our blog. Um, engineers from Allegro writes uh, about technologies that we use and the products that we use. There are some links to our uh, Twitter handle, Facebook handle, and if you're whenever in Poland and want to join one of our meetups, then you're more than welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Michal. Uh, do we have questions? Oh, OK, great. I myself, I actually worked at a API management company, <laughs> and I will have like 50. <laughs> Hi, me too. Uh, I'm, I'm Chris from 11 Sigma slash Stoplight. And one of the questions, actually two, two questions I had. Yeah. 
you mentioned in uh, in your uh, in your uh, presentation that you use Open API specifications, and you often have to manually ver verify and validate that, for example, your examples are existing or descriptions are correct, right? Have you ever tried experimenting with automated linting of AP Open API specifications mm. and integrating with? CIS yeah, yeah. Like well, uh, but the the problem is not only uh, of uh, anything that you can do automatically, because I think the biggest problem for us was the language used in the descriptions. So it's something that you have to verify uh, manually, because uh, we we try to keep the documentation to be, um, yeah, to be written in the same language of you know all the descriptions. So that would be uh, that would be quite difficult to. To have a linter, because yeah, we we tr uh, try to use linters for some basic stuff like you know we want to have dots at the end of the descriptions. So yeah, that's that's something that is automatically checked. Sure, great. And, and yeah. the other question is, uh, you also mentioned this open API and that you you present that in the form of documentation and you use one tool, and you also uh, expose that open API as a file somewhere so that other external tools can maybe yeah. discover it and, and utilize yeah, it. Yeah, somewhere. yeah, yeah. It's, okay. uh, well, the, the the front, the Redoc front, and we uh, earlier we used the Swagger UI, uh, they just, these are some, you know, written in, in, in JavaScript stuff, so they read from a, from a uh, remote files, and this file is available on the, on the internet. And uh, also because people use it to generate, for example, the SDKs or something like that. So okay, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Very Thanks. good talk. Thanks. We have time maybe for one question. One more. Yeah. Oh, okay. We have a very active <laughs> person here. <laughs> Hello again, and thank. For Bye. Thanks for the talk. I was wondering, and you've mentioned the performance of your gateway, and uh, you were saying it's like. 250 milliseconds per request on average. Uh, what technology stack do you use there? And uh, you mentioned that it is enough, but like some research is showing that everything uh, which is above 400 milliseconds is slow for users. It's like the user will notice that. Have you had such kind of feedback? Uh, well, the API is. Um, mm, I don't want to say only, but but um, many of the usages are by some backend uh, services. Well, especially the the integrations from from our partners. So many of that is is some some in, you know like a backend uh, service that uh, will um, collect some data from us or send data to us. So, so it's it's not always online. So 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 there of course there's, it is not a problem. But uh, no, we actually didn't have any any complaints from from the users, and we know that it's used also online. So, uh, so no, we use uh, well, we use Java there, so it's uh, it's in Java. Yeah, great. Uh, I will have a very tiny question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the why, right? Uh, the why. Did you actually count the costs you spent on this development and compare it to oh the solutions god. you had in the market? Oh my god! No, no. <laughs> I would be afraid to do that, <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know, because the problem. I think. Well, I'm. I'm not sure if I can. I'm allowed to, to say that, but I think the problem sometimes with management is that they, they say, okay, why, why should we buy something when we can build something, and and you don't, you know, count the cost of, you know, having a team building and maintaining yeah. it. You just think, okay, we have them and we pay them anyway. So uh, maybe that's that's why you're a manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many people uh, was the team that built uh, the solution? Um, I'm, I don't remember now, but I think it was around eight people. Because now, yeah, now there are six people as, uh, in the team working. But uh, yeah, it was it was a bit a bit larger back then. Yeah. You can, you yeah. <laughs> Uh, three, three months, yeah, to, to start. Yeah, in one quarter, they managed to start with the MVP. Yeah, like. So, yeah. If I understand, it's a service to create APIs. I have the databases, and without to build all the connections to have my no, APIs. it's just to expose the API to to uh, to the outside world. So we have microservices and and. Uh, I mean, I, I have the yeah. database, and I want to go to outside. I can use your your solution. Uh, well, it's it's only for uh, built for us, so we don't sell it. <laughs> uh, it's a pitch. <laughs> 
Yes, and we're not we're not we're not uh, making here any you know a new product on the on the market. No, it's it's just our own because it's uh, very tightly coupled to to our infrastructure and our features. Uh, so that's also one part that we like about it that it does what we wanted it to do.